SpaceX has just spent over $17 billion on some radio waves. You heard that right. SpaceX spent 75% of NASA's yearly budget on the exclusive rights to use some radio spectrum from legacy player EchoStar. This move could have secured SpaceX's lead in satellite connectivity for years to come around the globe. There's so much more to this than just lots of zeros on a monetary figure. They have the satellites, they have the Starship, and now they have the spectrum. SpaceX is on the cusp of launching an unprecedented unprecedented amount of network capacity into low Earth orbit. But why does a company have to license a spectrum? There are a limited number of frequencies that can be used, and we can't change that, it's just down to physics. In the US, the Federal Communications Commission controls all of the different frequencies that people can communicate over. Some of these are left open on purpose, say if you're using a handheld radio, a wireless microphone, or sending video from various sites in South Texas. But anyone can use those frequencies. If you're a satellite operator, and you want to guarantee service, you want to make sure nobody else is trying to step on your signal. Think of it like a highway, just with a few thousand lanes. An FCC license in this case would reserve a lane or lanes to a satellite operator. EchoStar had been holding their US 50 MHz S-band spectrum and international mobile satellite service spectrum licenses under the plan that they develop their own directed device satellite network. Clearly, that never materialized, despite a contract they signed with MDA Space last month, which has now been cancelled. EchoStar had essentially been holding the Spectrum as an asset, which had raised some eyebrows at the FCC, an asset which interested SpaceX to the tune of $17 billion. EchoStar had bought it up over the years at auctions and through acquisitions of other companies at a cost of about $4.5 billion. Talk about return on investment. For context on just how much money that is, NASA's yearly budget is approximately $25 billion. This Spectrum license could fund NASA's entire science and deep space exploration divisions at the current level and you'd still have enough money for 355 million Big Macs all for some radio waves. Compared to SpaceX's annual revenue back in June, Elon Musk estimated their 2025 revenue to be $15.5 billion. All of this is to say, this deal is huge. It's the company's biggest single deal to date, and it could be on par, if not more money, than they've spent on the entire Starship program. It's not exactly $17 billion of cold hard cash though. The deal has been split into three parts. Up to $8.5 billion is in cash, but another $8.5 billion is in SpaceX stock. In other words, EchoStar now owns a slice of SpaceX. There's also approximately $2 billion of cash interest payments SpaceX can pay towards EchoStar's debt through November 2027. At a price of $17 billion, this spectrum is clearly very valuable to SpaceX, so it must gain them a great deal, right? right? The new frequencies they can utilize will allow the next generation of Starlink direct-to-cell satellites to operate at 20 times the throughput, leading to the entire constellation having 100 times the capacity compared to the current generation. That's a lot of numbers, but it means in reality, SpaceX says it will enable 5G cellular connectivity. Now, don't go expecting the ultra-high-speed short-range service you'll find in dense urban environments, but rather something more middle-of-the-road. It's all part of SpaceX's quest to eliminate dead zones everywhere on the planet, assuming you have a view of the sky, of course. If this becomes reality, describing such a service as game-changing would be a huge understatement. SpaceX is working on the next generation Starlink satellites right now. They've secured the spectrum rights for those satellites to operate within. Now, they just need a big rocket to launch a lot of them on a regular basis. And as it happens, they're also developing just that. They've secured prime real estate in the satellite business, and they have more launch capacity than any of their competitors combined, and Starship is only going to increase that by orders of magnitude. If they weren't dominating the market already, then this move has certainly secured their position at the top for the next few years at least. And that's in addition to the various deals SpaceX is constantly running on their normal Starlink service. For example, in my area right now, they're offering the DISH hardware completely for free, under the condition you sign up for a 12-month plan. If you're a new entrant to this market, like Amazon's Project Kuiper, how are you going to compete? SpaceX owning the Spectrum license obviously means that nobody else can use it. And if your name is Global Star, that's a bit of a problem because they've been partnered with Apple for a few years now to offer satellite texting and emergency SOS features to the latest iPhones. And in fact, as announced today, the brand new Apple Watch Ultra 3. 
There were already rumours before today that Apple could abandon this partnership to use Starlink direct to sell, but with Elon Musk's personal opinions towards various Apple products as of late, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Do you think the biggest company in tech will collaborate with the biggest company in spaceflight? Let us know what you think in the comments. For now though, I've been Ryan Caton for NSF, thanks for watching and goodbye.